on June the 8th of 1992 was the day where I knew I needed an instrument rating. When I was 18 years old, I had taken the family um, Beach Sierra down to uh, Panama City, Florida for uh, some event. At the time, I didn't have an instrument rating. I just had my private pilot certificate. Coming back, uh, this is 1992. Just remember that. There's no four flight. There's only weather briefers on the phone. We had the weather channel. Look at your local radar. But first, the current local conditions. There just wasn't a lot out there. So I made a decision to take off in summer, late, to get home. It was a terrible mistake that could have ended very, very poorly. And that's why I wanted to share with you today about why you should get an instrument rating. So coming back to my hometown on that flight, the weather wasn't great. And not being instrument rating, I knew I wasn't going to go in the clouds or do anything illegal. But the clouds and the storms just kept coming. And I actually got boxed in to, I, I couldn't turn around and go back. Ceilings weren't great, but now I've got towering clouds all around me. I needed to do something. I was in real trouble. And this is during the days of pilotage and dead reckoning. We didn't have GPS. So I happened to look down and there's an airport and it was the best thing I've ever seen. Tri-County Airport and the weather was turning into garbage. So as soon as I land, the sky opens up and just massive, massive storms. And I knew I can't do that again. That was really dumb and it could have ended very poorly. I already knew I was going to get an instrument rating, but that's, that put it in cement. I'm getting an instrument rating. And I think that you should too. And really, I describe the instrument rating in one word, trust. Now I've got a hundred dollar bill here and a one dollar bill here and and it's just a piece of paper. But I trust that this paper is worth a hundred dollars and one dollar. And that's kind of what the instrument rating is like. It's about trust. It's just a piece of paper, but it shows that you trust yourself, you trust the airplane, you trust ATC, and you trust the National Airspace System, and you trust the rules and why they're there. It really is about trust. Hopefully by now, we all know that if you're a VFR pilot and you go into IMC, you're not qualified or capable of that type of flight, it can be a real killer. So first and foremost, we get an instrument rating for increased safety. When people get their instrument rating, the day they get it, they're going to be a pr procedurally very sharp and sound pilot. Then by exercising the privileges of that rating, your safety and your piloting skills and ability will just continue to go up. Now, instead of being the VFR pilot that sees the cloud and has to turn around and go home, now you can use your instrument rating to get up or get down through the clouds and go flying on that day. The other thing that instrument rating does is it really takes the doubt out of planning, let's say, a family trip. If you are a VFR pilot and you have a couple of friends or family going with you on a trip, they probably are going to want you to go or you're going to want to go. You're going to feel that pressure that, hey, we need to go. And if the weather is kind of iffy, you may feel that urge to, well, I'm just going to go anyway. But if you are instrument rated, then you know you can go. And certainly you want to have personal minimums and not go if the weather is really bad. But at least you have that option and greater flexibility of making that go, no-go decision. Another good reason to get an instrument rating is that's what, the, that's what the pros do. Like our professional pilots, our airline pilots and corporate pilots, they're all pretty much flying IFR all the time. And there's a really good reason for that, and it's safety. So if the pros are doing it, if it's good enough for them, it's good enough for me. Studying for the, and speaking of pro piloting, if you do want to be a career pilot, well, you're definitely going to need an instrument rating. Through your instrument training, your weather knowledge will just go through the roof through your instrument training. And then when you get out into the actual system, filing IFR and encountering that real world weather, you'll learn so much about weather and how to deal with it. Other thing about being an instrument rated pilot is you now have a real bond or relationship with ATC. We get to use the services of ATC in DFR role for things like flight following. But in IFR, you have to use the services. We're glad to do that because having another set of eyes, keeping us separated from other airplanes or marginal or poor weather, I'll take that every day of the week. The other thing that you'll see when you do your instrument training is that your precision and accuracy of things like holding headings and altitudes will increase tenfold. You know if you're going to be flying 4,000 feet, you're going to be flying at 4,000 feet, not 4,200 feet or 3,700 feet. Accuracy and precision is a big deal in the instrument world. Another reason, flying at night. It becomes a lot more comfortable if you have an instrument rating. It can be pretty disconcerting to be flying at night 
and not be able to see anything, what do you have to do there? Really, you have to trust your instruments. So if you have an instrument rated pilot, flying at night will be a lot more comfortable and it will keep you alive. You'll also know more about your GPS and your avionics than you probably thought you could know. You can't really do good instrument flying without good avionics and knowledge of that avionics. Knowing your navigation systems really will benefit you, not just in IFR, but in VFR flying as well. And one thing that we do here at the U.S. for instrument rating training that you should be aware of is like we're really training you to be a single pilot in IFR conditions. And that's one of the hardest things there is in aviation. Single pilot, IFR. If you look at what the pros do, they take two pilots when they are flying professionally. Yes, you certainly can go single pilot IFR. That's really difficult. So if you can bring another pilot along, absolutely. Or someone there to just help you with the radios or grabbing a chart or reading a checklist, it will help your workload a ton. And when you do get your instrument rating, it's not a vacation rating. It's not like going to get your seaplane rating or uh, you know maybe a three or four day multi-engine commercial add-on. You got to use it. If you stick that piece of paper in your pocket, and you don't fly, those skills are going to erode very quickly. Make your simple plan to stay current and proficient and get out there and use it. So if you're thinking about getting your instrument rating, awesome. You're probably asking yourself, what can I do now to get ready to start my instrument training? And I get this question a lot. First, I would get a ground school and get a ground school that's going to let you try it out first because they're not all created equal. Get a ground school that has a great instrument course and do that first before you even start your training. That will accelerate the training that you do in the air with the CFI, to CFII, so much. So get that ground training and written test done. Another thing to do, study your airplane, especially the avionics. The more button pushing and buttonology that you know, it's going to make your training uh, go that much faster and you'll be a safer pilot for it. Another good thing to do to get ready is listen to podcasts and read magazines about the instrument rating. Opposing Bases is a wonderful podcast about the National Airspace System. And I know I've learned more than I, I, I didn't know was possible just by listening to that podcast. And if you get something like IFR Magazine, which comes out every month, that's a great resource as well. So the instrument rating, go get it. It's about one word, trust. Safe flying, everybody. <laughs>